There's a common perception about spirituality, spiritual practice, and integrating spirituality within your life, that spirituality is all about peace and happiness and good feelings and just feeling at one with the universe. And, you know, that's not exactly wrong, but it's not the whole picture. The picture is a lot more nuanced than that. Today, I really want to talk about what it is to be growing spiritually, to develop that spiritual dimension, to really understand where that process is leading us. Now's a great time to subscribe to this YouTube channel, as well as to click the bell. You know, whenever we start anything new, we feel sort of excited about starting. And as we get started and it's coming together, we feel good about what we're doing and we enjoy it and we're excited. And that carries us through the initial awkwardness of trying something new. Many people at New Year's make resolutions. And one of the most common resolutions that people make is to join a gym or to develop an exercise routine. And they set goals to do it, like they want to lose 10 pounds or they want to get in better shape or whatever it may be. And it's interesting to know that gym memberships for January increase markedly. And people go and they report that they feel great about working out, they like what they're doing, they have more energy and feel better about themselves, they sleep better at night, all of this good stuff. And then come around mid-February, attendance at gyms is dropping. So that by the end of February, all those people who had joined, many of them are no longer continuing. What happens in that process? Well, all that excitement was there. It was very real at the beginning. It felt good. But those initial feelings fell away and the routine set in. And routines that we set for ourselves, well, they're not always exciting and glamorous. They're routine. The same is true for spiritual practice and, and the intentional ways that we look at developing our spiritual life. It often feels really good at the beginning. We have this great sense of peace, the sense of wholeness. We feel more at home in ourselves. But then over time, it becomes routine. And because we're missing those feelings and we think those feelings are what should be part of our spiritual practice, we think we've done something wrong. Now, one of the most important things we can know about feelings and emotions is that feelings come and go. An emotional state never lasts forever. You know, we know that if we think about our daily experience. Throughout the day, we experience all kinds of emotions. They just come and go. And they give us information, but they don't last forever. The same is true for the feelings we have related to spiritual practice. You know, for a while, something may feel good. But because it isn't there anymore, because it doesn't feel the same way, doesn't mean something's wrong. In fact, it's generally an indication that we're doing the right thing. The mistake people often make is they think that when those positive feelings, that real sense of peace and overwhelming goodness fade away, that they're doing something wrong and they need to change up their routine. So maybe if they're doing meditation, they try to learn a new technique. Or they, you know, light candles and incense, add music, and do whatever it is they can do, sit in a different position. And all these different things to try to get that feeling back, thinking that the feeling is the important thing. But the feeling isn't the important thing about our spiritual practice. What's important is that we have a routine that helps to take us deeper into ourself, into a place that's beyond the feeling, so that the feeling fades away. Not only does that initial feeling that we have fade away, but our concerns about the future, our anxieties, uh, the, the resentments we have about the past, the tapes we keep playing over and over, they also begin to fade away. And we move into a deeper place within ourselves. It's important for us to let that happen. 
When we don't allow that to happen, when we keep changing things up, we're not really growing. It's as though we're skimming across the surface of the water and keep taking little sips rather than diving into the deep end of the pool and letting the water surround us. And what we really want to do is get into that deep end of the pool and experience the depth of that, experience what it means to go deep within ourselves, because that's the place where we're going to really experience the quiet and the wholeness. That's where we're trying to go. And that's very important for us to realize. Allow the feelings to fade and to allow ourselves to really get quiet within ourselves without any illusions, without any uh, connotations of what needs to be. The only thing that needs to be is for you to be present and to be there. So let's be honest. Going deeper into ourselves can be scary for a lot of people. That's because a lot of people have never allowed themselves to do that. It's new territory. It's something that they've not experienced before. And one of the things that we're likely to experience is that as we go deeper within ourselves, we find that there's a lot of debris and maybe even some sludge, things that are left over and rotting inside of us from past hurts, ways we have been hurt by others, ways we have hurt ourselves, the resentments we hold on to, the, the things that people have told us about ourselves that have made us feel less than who we need to be. All of this stuff, even if we think we've gotten over it, there are often pieces of it that have been inside of us that continue to be there and rot away. As we go deeper within, we begin to encounter this stuff. And it isn't like it all happens at once. It happens in, in, in little pieces here and there. When we encounter that, of course, it's uncomfortable. We may have some feelings about it. Sometimes we have a feeling of emptiness. Sometimes we feel pain. Uh, the, the feelings that you have are, are, are the feelings that are right for you. I can't tell you what you should feel. But allow yourself to experience that. It's okay. What's important is to allow yourself to experience the feeling and to get it out of you because you don't need to carry that stuff any, around any longer. And our spiritual practice is a great way to help clear that junk out. So how do we get it out? There are some basic, simple ways that we can do that. One, one thing that many people do is to journal, either writing in a book journal by hand or writing at a keyboard, writing out what the experience was, what's happening for you, what you're letting go of, and getting it out. You know, Other people have a close friend that they can talk to who will simply listen. You know, At this point, there's nothing to solve, but having someone listen and hear what you're saying can be really important. I do a combination of these things. I have a very good friend who I've known for about 40 years, and, and we help each other in this. If I encounter something that has been unresolved for me, I will take time and write out an email to him and explain what happened, what I experienced in my meditation. And I'll send it off to him. And sometimes he writes back or other times we'll talk by phone about it. And he does the same with me. And so we sort of get it out of ourselves in that way. Some people experience deeper hurts as they're uh, moving through uh, their spiritual practice. Sometimes what comes up are memories of trauma or abuse or something very hard in life, something that's really unresolved. That's a great time to talk to a therapist or a counselor and help have them help you sort through all of that and get it behind you. But more often than not, one of the things that happens is that people simply become confused. What is it that's happening? I was feeling great whenever I was doing my meditation and now I'm running into this stuff and what's going on and I don't know what to do with it. That's an excellent time to talk to a spiritual director. Spiritual director is trained to help you sort through your experience, to ask you questions, to help you 
get it to unfold and get it out and to integrate your spiritual practice more fully. Be sure to pay attention to the video I've, I've already posted, Your Spiritual Direction, to learn more about spiritual direction, because it will help you understand what the process is about and how to work with a spiritual director. All of these things are helpful at enabling us to get that garbage, that sludge, that stuff that's built up out of us. And it's important to get that out of us because we're going further inward than just that stuff. I understand the inner journey that we're making through spiritual practice from a metaphor that was used by the third and fourth century hermits in the Sinai Desert. This is an image out of my own Christian tradition. The hermits wrote about being on this journey as the journey along the royal road. And of course, when you're on this journey on the royal road, there is no better road to be on than on this inner journey. It's a royal road. And on this journey, yeah, there, there are times that you're at the oasis and it feels great and it's wonderful. But there are times when the road is bumpy. There are potholes. There are obstacles that you have to get through. But whether you're at the oasis or dealing with bumps, you eventually come to a place where the road smooths out. And that smooth road is going to take you into your, the core of your being, to the center of who you are, where there is light and wholeness and peace that's beyond words, that's the, really the core of who we are individually. So the process is being on that road, being on that journey. It's a journey within. And along the way, there are many different things. The important thing is to stay on the road and not to take detours, but to keep on going. And that's what will bring us to a place where we're really living an integrated and whole life. At the beginning of the video, I used the analogy of going to a gym. And, you know, to be honest, I'm one of those people that has joined lots of gyms. And after a few weeks, I'm not there so much anymore. One of the great things about the pandemic is that I couldn't go to a gym if I quit my, left go of my membership. And I got equipment to exercise at home. And I found that having the equipment that I needed at home meant that I actually did it. Being able to just break away from work and go and do something was really a good thing for me. But while I was at all of those different gyms, trainers told me the same thing over and over again, that it was going to be three to four months before I would be able to see the difference the exercise was making. Think about that. Three to four months before I would begin to see the difference. Now, I have friends who run marathons. I even have one good friend who ran an Ironman. I know from them that they don't just start running in marathons and doing things, you know, without a lot of training, without a lot of exercise. Running around the block three times doesn't mean you're ready for a marathon. It takes time and it takes practice and it takes commitment. And the same thing is true for our spiritual development, for our growth. It takes time. And often we may not see the changes that are happening or it takes time to be able to see it. And those changes may appear to us as just noticeable differences. We see little things that begin to change in us. Other people may see changes before we do. That's because they generally have to live with us and put up with us. So they see when we're becoming kinder and more patient. Most of the time, the differences are really small from our own perspective. And that shouldn't be surprising. Think about when you look into a mirror. People don't look in a mirror and say, Oh, that's a beautiful person. Instead, we look in the mirror and see all of our faults. The same thing is true when we're looking at ourselves and our growth. We don't see what we've accomplished. We see where things still aren't right. Other people see the beauty before we do. 
In another video, I talked about my own spiritual practice. The video is three key elements of your daily spiritual practice. And in that video, I told the story of learning meditation whenever I was in junior high school. Clearly, that was a long time ago. And that core teaching that I gained whenever I was in junior high school was the foundation for my practice, and it, it remains the foundation. It developed into a broader practice, and I set a pattern for myself, a routine, and that routine begins each morning, and I talk about that in the video. What's important is that you have your routine, your regular practice that you stick to, and allow that practice to carry you through, because that's what's going to help you grow. That's going to be what takes you on the royal road to encounter that illumination within you. It will bring you to a sense of wholeness. You may not see it as it's happening, but that's okay. It's not about your feelings. It's not about what you can observe directly. It's a process that takes time. And allow it to unfold, because over time, it will help to illuminate your life and be a source of life and goodness and light for other people. Thanks for being here. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, click the bell, like the video, and share this video with other people. Thanks. Have a great day.